timing matters. When your only becomes rocketed to a low, that could be because of timing, rather than a lack of muscles. Because think about it, you can easily pop the tail while standing on the ground. So if it becomes incredibly harder in an Oli, there must be hidden science behind it. This time, we will study the timing of an Oli from a scientific and physiological point of view. Trust me, what we will discuss today applies to many other tricks too, whether it's a tray flip, or 360 pop shove it, or no slide or whatsoever. You're watching Why the Trick, please subscribe. Even before talking about timing, we first need to understand the difference between a jump and a pop. Generally, a jump refers to taking off the ground with both feet and staying in the air. In this context, however, we define it as lifting your body's center of gravity from its original position. And we call it a jump even if your feet don't get off your board. A pop, on the other hand, refers to kicking the tail down primarily with the back ankle. While jumping is an act of lifting your body weight upwards, popping is about kicking the tail downwards. And you must put them together in the correct order. You need to jump before you pop. Now let's simulate how a jump and a pop affects the board when you do the timing right and wrong using 3D models. Starting from the right case. Just like any other object in this universe, gravity pulls your body toward the ground. Then your body weight is distributed to your feet, and the pressure transfers to your wheels. Now the ground pushes them back with the same amount of energy, which is why you can stand on the ground. In order to jump first, you have to crouch down. As your body descends from standing to squatting, it gains downward acceleration. This is just the same phenomenon that happens to a falling object. By falling, your body exerts much more pressure on your board when it reaches a squatting position compared to when you're standing still. Moving your board in this state is not easy as your body weight pressurizes the nose of your board. And this is why you have to jump before popping. In order to jump, you need to use both feet to counteract the downward acceleration you gained by squatting. Once you have exerted enough downward force, the ground pushes you back and your body starts moving upward by itself. While your body is going upward, your board is no longer held back from your body weight, and you can lift the nose freely by popping the tail. However, even when your body starts rising, it is still not the right time to pop. As your lower body stays bent at this point, your muscles cannot generate their 100% potential strength. Although, you might be able to remove the pressure on your front foot without lifting your body so high. But, the downward force maximizes when you fully extend your hip joints, knees, and ankles simultaneously. We will talk about how to practice it in a moment, but let's see what happens if you time it wrong first. I believe everyone has done a rocket ollie, which is a perfect example of the wrong timing. Simply put, it happens when you pop the tail without lifting your body, or before lifting your body high enough. Please imagine, by popping the tail, the board's angle increases, but without lifting your body's center of gravity, your front foot stays low. Ideally, your front foot should be dragging your board up, but when it stays low, the force of the nose pushes your front foot back as it comes up in an arc, resulting in a rocket ollie. Let us pause here and focus on the movement of muscles. By contracting the quadriceps muscles and extending your lower legs, you can acquire the power to push the ground to raise your body. In other words, you must contract your quads as much as possible to maximize the power that your legs push the ground. If your legs are straightened, that indicates you are doing so. Conversely, if you don't fully extend your legs, you won't be able to push the ground sufficiently making it harder to secure the airtime. Now, you may think you should fully extend your back leg when you pop, but please be careful. You can straighten it by kicking it out to the side too. 
indeed, depending on the angle of the kick. Sometimes you should add a little pull to your pop, so the nose bites into your front foot more. However, if you pull the tail too far, you won't be able to receive enough rebound from the ground, and you won't be able to lift your body high enough. Also, when you pull the tail too far, the boar's nose will overly press your front foot instead of popping up vertically, which also causes a rocket ollie. So, I recommend applying a vertical force on both feet if you are ollie rockets. The repulsive force from the ground lifts your body and front foot and pops up the board vertically. Thus, you can avoid the problem that your board overly pressing your front foot. If you still think it is better to add a pull to your pop, although you might be right, but think about it this way. If your body's center of gravity is near the center of the board, and the tail is on the back side, don't you think you will kick the board backward anyway? Ultimately, you will have to adjust how hard you pull the tail, but I hope this gives you a different perspective. Going back to the main topic. Again, popping refers to an action that you kick down the tail, which obviously is different from lifting your body. And an ollie does not start by popping the tail. It starts with lifting your body, or in this context, jumping. Be sure to jump and raise your center of gravity before popping. By the way, if you want to bone your ollie, which I say how to practice, I made a video that verifies the optimal angle of the front foot using a physics engine. Please take a look at it too. Lastly, let's see how to ollie from a physiological point of view a bit more. First, crouch down. I recommend having your shoulders parallel to your board, especially when you want to ollie higher. There's a physiological reason behind this. In order to extract your muscles 100% capability, you should utilize the concept of the stretch shortening cycle, or SSC, which is a physiological reaction where your muscles can generate more energy when you shorten them immediately after stretching them. Please try it for yourself. You should be able to jump higher right after crouching from a standing position than when you jump from an already crouched position. This means the same muscles can generate more energy when you add a prior motion to them. Studies say there is a statistical correlation between how low you squat and how high you can jump, as you can stretch the muscles you use to jump by squatting. So why not use this concept in an ollie? Usually, you should keep your shoulders at a comfortable angle, and I actually keep my shoulders wide open when I'm not going for a high ollie. But, according to the stretch shortening cycle, the more you stretch your muscles, the more energy they can generate. By having your shoulders parallel to your board, you can squat down lower than when your shoulders are open, which extends your muscles more, allowing you to jump higher. Distributing your weight right between your feet helps you push your board evenly on both feet which is essential to counteract the downward force you gain by lowering your body. The weight distribution may change depending on what you try to do though. You may place your weight somewhere on the front foot side when you want to do a normal ollie. But if you want to ollie higher, I recommend placing it right in between your feet. In order to fully utilize the effect of SSC, you should avoid holding your movement too long after crouching down, as it also messes with your balance. Beginners tend to do this either because they want to adjust their balance, or by hesitating. Practice crouching straight down to where you want to be, and jumping back up without spending too long. By pushing down your board, the ground pushes your body back upward, and lifts its center of gravity. At this point, the pressure on the left foot starts to decrease, but remember, your lower body is still bent. This is not the right time to pop, as the muscles can generate their maximum energy when they fully extend. So wait until your upper body rises high enough, and your lower body straightens before popping. And this is finally the time to pop. Use your back calf and snap the tail with your ankle. At this point, your back, hip joint, knee, and ankle should be fully extended. 
Remember, popping does not leave their body. So, if you're not getting enough height in your alley, consider extending your lower body first and pop after that. And after popping, move on to holding down the nose by sliding up your front foot. Please refer to the previous contents in the description for details. If you need help getting your timing right, try practicing it on the ground. Crouch down and get back up on both feet. Get used to keeping your right foot on the ground after raising your body. Once you can do that, kick down the ground with your right foot and launch yourself up. This practice and an actual ollie share the same principles. Your back leg should straighten when you leave the ground. Thank you for watching so far. I believe I could have shown you the importance of extending your knees. The problem is, you can't tell if your knees bent while skating or by looking at a 2D video, which makes it harder to see what's happening in your ollie. And that's exactly why I offer you an AI motion capturing system. Upload a video, and the system automatically converts it into a 3D animation, so you can analyze your motion objectively. Since it is 3D, you can change its angle, slow it down, and display grid lines to see how much your knees bent. As it's still under development, you might encounter errors, but I hope the system helps as many of you as possible. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Until next time.